Welcome to episode 10 of our podcast series, where we explore practical topics to help you improve your English fluency. Today's focus is on navigating social events, whether you're attending a party, a networking event, or a casual gathering. That's right, Olivia. Social events are a common part of life, and they offer a great opportunity to practice English in real-life situations. From small talk to making new connections, knowing how to navigate these events can really boost your confidence. Exactly. So, let's start with the basics. Imagine you're at a party and you meet someone new. What are some good ways to start a conversation? One of the simplest ways is to start with a friendly greeting and a compliment. For example, you might say, Hi, I'm James. I love your outfit. Where did you get it? Compliments are a great icebreaker because they make people feel good and open up the conversation. That's a great tip, James. Another way to start a conversation is by asking open-ended questions. For instance, you could say, what brought you to this event? Or, how do you know the host? These questions encourage the other person to share more about themselves. Yes, open-ended questions are fantastic because they lead to more engaging conversations. And don't forget to share a bit about yourself too. When you respond, offer some information about your own experiences or interests. It keeps the conversation balanced and interesting. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about small talk. Small talk can sometimes be tricky, especially if you're not familiar with the people you're talking to. Common topics for small talk include the weather, recent news, or even the event you're attending. For example, you might say, the weather has been so unpredictable lately, hasn't it? Or, have you seen the latest news about a current event? Small talk is a great way to ease into deeper conversations. It's also important to listen actively. Show genuine interest in what the other person is saying by nodding, making eye contact, and asking follow-up questions. For example, if someone mentions a recent trip, you could ask, what was the highlight of your trip? Listening actively is key to making connections. It helps you respond appropriately and keeps the conversation flowing. And if you're unsure about what to say next, you can always use phrases like, that sounds interesting, or tell me more about that. Definitely. Another important aspect of navigating social events is knowing how to gracefully exit a conversation. If you need to move on, you can say something like, it's been great talking to you. I'm going to grab another drink now, but I hope we can chat again later. This way, you leave the conversation on a positive note. That's a great point. Exiting conversations politely is just as important as starting them. And remember, it's perfectly okay to take breaks and mingle with different people at the event. Now, let's discuss some useful phrases and expressions you might use at social events. For example, when meeting someone, you could say, Nice to meet you. How do you know the host? Or, if you're joining a group, you might say, Mind if I join you? I'm James, by the way. Good phrases to know. And don't forget to use polite expressions like excuse me or sorry to interrupt. These phrases help you navigate conversations smoothly and show respect for others. Let's also talk about handling different types of social events. For formal events, such as a business dinner or a wedding, you might need to adjust your language and tone. For example, you'd use more formal language and avoid slang. You might say, I'm delighted to be here. How do you find the event so far? Exactly. For informal events, like a casual get-together or a party with friends, you can be more relaxed and use casual language. You might say, hey, what's up? Have you tried the snacks? And remember, adapting to the formality of the event will help you fit in and feel more comfortable. It also shows that you're aware of social norms and can adjust your language accordingly. Now, let's talk about cultural differences. Social norms can vary greatly between cultures, so it's important to be mindful of this. For example, in some cultures, it's common to engage in small talk before getting to business, while in others, people might prefer to get straight to the point. Good point, Olivia. Being aware of these differences can help you avoid misunderstandings and make you more adept at navigating social situations in different contexts. Let's give our listeners a practical exercise. 
The next time you attend a social event, try to use at least three of the phrases or techniques we discussed today. Pay attention to how the conversations go and reflect on what worked well and what you might want to improve. Great exercise. And if you're practicing with friends or family, ask for feedback on your conversational skills. It can be really helpful for building confidence and refining your approach. Exactly. And remember, the more you practice navigating social events in English, the more natural it will become. Keep experimenting with different approaches and don't be afraid to make mistakes, they're part of the learning process. Thanks for joining us for today's episode. We hope these tips help you feel more confident at your next social event. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and join us for the next episode where we'll cover another exciting topic to boost your English fluency. See you soon! Take care everyone, and keep practicing your English. Before we wrap up, let's quickly review the key takeaways from today's episode. We discussed how to start conversations, handle small talk, and navigate both formal and informal social events. And don't forget the cultural tips. Being aware of different social norms can make your conversation smoother and more enjoyable. Keep these tips in mind, and you'll be a social event pro in no time.